is growing to be such an incredible woman of authority. You live life quietly, Honor, but your stamp is far from quiet. And I really believe that as you grow in your authority, your that sense of authority and that voice will be heard and it will ripple out. And today I am honoured to stand with you for this moment. But there are people here today who have come in and maybe your week hasn't been that great. And I just want to say that today is a day that we celebrate new life and I want to declare over your lives that today is a day of new life in your life. If you are believing God for, for breakthrough in different areas, I want to declare that today is a day of new life. And we, we stand together with you guys and we believe for new life in your lives as well. So as we worship God, let's, let's believe for new life. Let's, let's believe for greater things. This is one of those hearts that all of heaven has stopped today to look in to see what Honor's doing. So what I've asked Honor to do is share part of a story. So I want you to listen up to Honor's story. Hello. Um, so I've been a Christian for most of my life up until this point. I'm still a Christian. But <laughs> <laughs> um, so for the past 18 years I've been a Christian. I'd say for the past seven they've been pretty tough. And there's been some tough seasons I've walked through. Um, so today, this baptism to me is something I've always wanted to do, but never felt ready to do. And I decided today I was ready. Um, and also, it's a time where I feel like all the tough stuff is going to wash away. And all the things people have spoken over me that are not true, I'm going to be free of. And I'm also standing here as part of the last two years. I've had a word for every season. Last year it was courage, and so it was courage of allowing God to be like part of my story. And this year it's faith, and so it's having the faith to step into that and walk with Him and trust Him that He's got me no matter what. So that's my story. Yeah. I just want to declare over you, Honor that Christ's blood washed away every one of those words that should not be there. Mm. And we today, as the church, are going to stand with her and speak uh, God words over her, aren't we? Amen. Yeah. We're going to speak words of honour and courage and faith. Yes. I love your, your name is Honour. Yes. I love the inspiration, that whatever that was, but this is a young lady who brings honour wherever she goes. Uh, and if you talk to any one of the kids that are in kids' church, she brings honour into that place. And those kids love her, those kids uh, feel very safe with her, and it's just such a declaration of the heart that she carries. So in baptism, Scripture talks about baptism, and Apostle Paul will write about it saying that we go under, it's a sign of the, our, our old life is dead and gone. Uh, and we know with honour her old life is dead and gone. That was dead and gone a, a long time ago, and new life has been part of her story ever since. Uh, the Apostle Paul would say, let go of the old life and hold on now to the new. And honour, this is... What you doing? Yep. Yep. She's quiet, but she's going to roar like a lion, isn't she? <laughs> when Anna comes up from the water, the Bible speaks about that as coming back and restored to life. And we understand that symbolically, but I want you to understand it spiritually. Uh, because the things of the kingdom that are happening inside this pool today is that the testimony that she bears, the Bible says that our testimony in the blood of Christ is sufficient to overcome Satan. Yes. Do you understand the impact of what she has just done, of what she is just doing? And so this is no ritual. This is a symbolic statement in time that she can look back on to know that today that she has spoken out and glorified God. And when the word of God goes out, 
never comes back void. So Honor, do you profess that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Saviour? Yes. And do you promise to follow him all the days of your life? Yes. Okay. Well, on profession of your faith, I'm going to baptise you now in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> church news for you guys before we head in to the message. Uh, we have morning tea downstairs, so come on downstairs. Uh, everybody is welcome. If you're visiting today, please hang around and have a cup of coffee with us. Uh, if you're part of uh, the entourage of All Things Honour, come on downstairs and enjoy. Uh, just so, so thrilled that you're here. Uh, next Saturday night, we have Spirit and Grace at George's River Life, Life Centre. Uh, that's something that as most of you know, we're a part of. Uh, it's at, it starts at seven o'clock over at George's River. Uh, I'll be leading half of the, the, the evening in worship and uh, it's gonna be a great night. We have Cafe Church coming up and like we've been saying this month, we're not doing Cafe Church at night, we're doing Cafe Church at lunch. And so we would love for our whole church to, to meet with us around a lunch table. That's gonna be on the 29th of July. We're inviting you to bring a plate to share uh, and don't put any nuts in what you bring. Um, the whole concept of Cafe Church is having a few people speak about what they carry in the kingdom at that table. And we would love for you to be there to hear what some of these um, folk are sharing. Now, Amanda's not in the room, and so we're volunteering Amanda to be one of those people. Uh, she's not here to say no. She's watching it on the TV, probably laughing right now, but uh, Amanda, you're one of them. And uh, we're looking for a couple of others who are willing to share something of what they carry. And if you don't know what you carry, come and have a conversation with me. And I'd uh, love to be able to talk with you about that. We also have Wellspring Conference coming up at Ride Baptist. Uh, that's something I'll be speaking at. There's flyers for that. So if you want to grab one and take one, uh, you are most welcome to come along. I think it's a $35 for the day. And that includes lunch. And you're going to get some great teaching. I'm going to be speaking on the prophetic and some of the work that we're doing in helping people hear the voice of God. Uh, so if you want to come along for that, you are most welcome. Now we do have one change of date. and We've advertised that our church AGM is going to happen on the last Tuesday of this month, but we've found that conflicts with another date, so we've got to move the church's AGM to Thursday the 2nd of August. So please make a note of that. I'll get Ida to send out an email so we're, we're all aware. Uh, but that's the 2nd of August. It's a Thursday evening. We're good? Honours back in the service? It's always awesome to baptise people. It does not bother me that she chose the date that she did on the coldest day of the entire year to do that. I would go into Arctic waters to baptise people. Uh, it is one of the joys of my job and, uh, and I don't even call it a job. It's just something that I would just do just for fun. 
Uh, it's such a privilege to stand in those places of incredible testimony and story and just the Holy Spirit. She carries the Holy Spirit so powerfully and, and so richly. Uh, last week, um, Anna said to me that a bunch of her friends were going to come to church. And uh, last week, as a church, we committed to pray for Anna uh, through, the, through the week. And I asked her to give me some names of people that might be coming along with her. Uh, and so we've had a few people praying on her through the week. And I just want to share with you some of the things that we've seen. Now, I don't know if all of these people are here, so I'm just going to read it. And if this is for you, receive it. If you don't want to receive it, someone else can take it. Is that right? Happy for this word for you. Okay, so I have Deb. Uh, you are destined for greatness. You are strong, brave, and fearless. You have seen many battles and have many wounds, but under your thick armor, which you only allow a few people to see, our Father in heaven is loving on you so much. I saw you running towards Jesus as he was reaching out his hands towards you to embrace you. He held you so close, and you knew you were safe with him. Elston, I see you as a person who is visionary. You see, th you see things before others can. I see you hiking on a mountain. You have had a full hiking, gear, full hiking gear on, but you are tired. You carry some heavy stuff, and it's time to offload it. Cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Chris, you have a great sense of humour. I saw you laughing and making others laugh. You bring joy to other people's lives. You lift people's spirits because you hate seeing your friends hurt or unhappy. Your compassion is a gift. Embrace it. You are a loyal and a great friend in whom others find a safe place. Belinda, I see an orange and green butterfly. A new season you are walking into is going to be marked with both life and transformation. Georgia, I see Deborah from the Bible. You are called to do things that others will balk at doing or not do at all. Have courage, for the Lord is with you. Uh, Brady, the word I have for you is compassion. It will move you, empower you, and change the lives of those around you. Ellen, uh, a delicate silver crown is what we see placed on your head by Jesus. Your crown is quite tall in, front, in the front with a diamond on it. It is very feminine. James, I see a policeman's hat on your head. You are called to protect and serve. And Alyssa, a chandelier of diamonds sparkles. It is you. Your beauty will be seen as a reflection of Jesus. You will attract people to Christ. That's a whole bunch of people who don't know you guys, just want to pray over you guys and ask God for a word for you. And if that's helpful, awesome. If you like that, feel free to come and grab that. I'm going to read to you from the book of Romans. It's going to be up there on your screen. Hopefully. I'm trying to get this thing working. <laughs> We're back at the start. I'll find it. I'll find it. Thank you. So if you've got your Bibles there, Romans chapter 4, I'm going to read from verses 1 to 8. Okay. We're, we're good to go. It's up there on the screen. Abraham was, was, humanly speaking, the founder of our Jewish nation. What did he discover about being made right with God? If his good deeds made him acceptable to God, he would, have, he would have had something to boast about, but that was not God's way. But the scriptures tell us Abraham believed God and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. When people work, their wages are not a gift, but something they have earned. But people are counted as righteous, not because of their work, but because of their faith in God who forgives sinners. David also spoke of this when he described the happiness of those who are declared righteous without working for it. Oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sins are put out of sight. Yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of sin. How many people here this morning has had their record cleared of sin? Cleared? Absolutely. We're not trailing anything behind us? No. No? We're good? So the whole concept that we've been speaking about is this concept of grace. And this morning I, I want to give you a working and understanding of grace through the man of Abraham. The Bible here says that uh, he wasn't able to do good enough works to make himself acceptable to God. Do you feel that you're acceptable to God? Yes. Thank you, Miriam. Miriam is in strong voice this morning. I encourage you to be in that way too. Do you feel that you're acceptable to God? Years ago, when I was 10 years old, I uh, was living in, in a place called Lincoln, and um, we'd just moved into Lincoln, and uh, I was desperately trying to make friends. 
I don't know if you've ever had an encounter or an experience like that where you're desperately trying to make friends and, and you're doing whatever you can to make yourself acceptable. And uh, part of that in the time was when BMX bikes, was, bikes were starting. Do you remember that time, Lily, when BMX bikes started happening? Some of you guys go, they've always been around, haven't they? No. No. I had a bike, but it wasn't a BMX, and I tried to pretend it to be a BMX, and so it made it look like a BMX, and all, but it just wasn't. <laughs> and in those days around Lidcombe, there was lots of bikey gangs, not as in Harley Davidson's, but BMX. And so at 10 years old, you wanted to be acceptable, so we decided to create a uh, bikey gang. And, and the few of my mates got together, and we had this really, uh, re really unique um, title name, we called ourselves the Skulls. <laughs> now, we rode around as the Skulls, but one of our mates at one point said, if we're going to do this, we've actually got to be branded. And uh, so what are we going to do? We're going to create t-shirts and what colour t-shirt? And uh, my mates have decided yellow. Now, I only had one yellow t-shirt and that was my PE shirt. <laughs> And at that moment in time, I had to decide whether I was going to be acceptable to my friends or acceptable to my mum and dad. I went with my friends. And so what we did is we got a permanent marker and some scissors and we cut the sleeves off all of our t-shirts and then we did a skull and crossbones on the front with this beautiful word of skulls that was written underneath it. Now. Mum didn't have to know about that yet, and, uh, and so we were riding around as the skulls and our yellow t-shirts and everyone saw us and everyone knew us, until PE came around and I came out and just being me, I said to mum, have you seen my PE shirt? I can't find it. <laughs> and mum's like, it's in your drawer. I said, no, I don't, don't think it is. Can't find it, can't find it. And mum's like, well, you got it, so you gotta go find it. No, I can't find it, can't find it. She goes, for goodness sake, is what my mother would say. Isn't that right, Laura and Aaron? For goodness sake, for goodness sake, Matthew. And she goes into my, my drawer and sure enough she pulls out my yellow t-shirt and I, I can tell you what happened next was not acceptable. <laughs> and I quickly learned that there are things that are acceptable inside of the family home and things that aren't acceptable. And, and cutting the sleeves off a PE shirt and writing skulls with a skull and crossbone on it apparently isn't. Sometimes our whole lives are lived in trying to be acceptable to God. And sometimes our entire lives are then lived feeling that we're unacceptable to God. The book here, the book of the Bible here in Romans will declare that there's no good deed that you can do to make yourself acceptable. And in Romans chapter 3, it tells you that every bad deed has been washed away. So my bad deeds don't make me unacceptable and my good deeds don't make me acceptable. So what is it that about faith that I need to actually understand? And so here, the Apostle Paul decides that the, that the man Abraham is the guy that he's going to sit on. And, and he, says to, he says something like this. The scriptures tell us that Abraham believed God and God counted him as righteous, which means as a friend in relationship with nothing separating each other from each other's love. God counted him as righteous because of his his faith. And so today I thought we'd just go back in time and have a look a bit at the history of Abraham and see how this actually worked. Because often we go, okay, that sounds good, but what does that actually mean and how does that actually look? And so let's just see if we can get this thing to work now. There we go. In Genesis chapter 11, Abraham's dad, his name, you can see his name there, is Terah. I read that terror. Nobody wants to have a dad called Terah, right? <laughs> Some of you are going, yeah, I have one of those. Um, but uh, one day Terah took his son Abram, his daughter-in-law Sarah, his, his son Abram's wife, and his grandson Lot, his son Haran's child, and moved away from Ur of the Chaldeans. And he was headed for the land of Canaan. The land of Canaan is what would eventually become the promised land. Now, the promised land didn't happen until hundreds of years after this point in time, but God already had his people moving towards the promise. Do you understand that? God already had it hundreds of years before it. And, and so I want to say to you that wherever you are in your, in your life right now, wherever you are in your family, God has you moving towards the promise. Do you, do you agree with that? The Bible says that all things work for good for those who love 
God and called according to his purposes. And if that's the case, wherever you are right now, for good or for bad, uh, God is doing something in and through you to move you to the place where he's called you to be. That is the place of promise. And so you might look back at your life and go, well, some of those things that happen aren't cool. And God's like, yeah, I fully get that. And I'm, he's not making them cool. But he's saying there's purpose in them. And so whatever reason, we don't know why Terah left Ur and went towards Canaan, but we know that he started moving. And for me, there was something of God on that. There was something of God that was leading him to a place of promise. The next thing, though, if you can see the next slide, it says, but they, they stopped. But they stopped. They stopped at a place called Haran, which is nowhere near Canaan. Now, here's the thing with so many people in, in our, and so many of us, at times we'll get so far and then we will stop. At so, there's times we will hear a whole bunch about God, but we'll get so far and then we'll stop because, oh, I'm not sure if I can believe that. I'm not sure if I can receive that. And sometimes we just get content where we are and so we don't bother going any further. Does that make sense? Yeah. Here, the man Terah stopped. But they stopped at Haran and settled there, and Terah lived there for, two, lived for 205 years and died still living short of the promise. I want to say to you that your earthly parents will only get you so far. And I say that in all due respect as a parent myself, and knowing that Zach is sitting in the room, I can only get him so far. Your earthly parents, for right or for wrong, they've got you to where you are today, sitting inside of a room, listening to something of the kingdom of God, seeing something of the kingdom of God, and being a part of the kingdom of God. They've only got you so far, but now, now is the next thing that, that we need to have happen in this story. What you need is a revelation. You need a revelation of something of God. And so the Lord has said to Abram, leave your native country and your relatives and your father's family and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All families on the earth will be blessed through you. One of the things that I believe and I teach is that every single one of us should be able to encounter God. Thank you, Mary. Keep pointing, Mary. She's got a great voice. Didn't she sing great this morning? Amen. And she's willing to talk back to me <laughs> and be nice. Every single Christian, if not every single person on the planet, should have an encounter with God. And when I say an encounter, let's just say there are many, 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 many encounters to come. Not just one. Who, who agrees with that? Amen. And so, you know, I taught a couple of weeks ago about baptism of the Holy Spirit and just say, if you only get that once, then you've been ripped off. The baptism of the Holy Spirit for me happens when I came to Christ and it happens every single time that I, I seem to engage with the Holy Spirit. It happens up there in the pool when I'm praying for someone and baptizing someone. It happens when I'm preaching. It happens when Lisa is leading worship and Miriam's singing her heart out. It just happens, right? It just happens. And I've found in my own spirit at times that sometimes I don't feel like it and there's sometimes that I just want to go, you know what, I'm not sure if I want to engage with that today. But I've discovered every time I want to put my hand up and move into that place of God's presence, there's something of His Spirit that I encounter. Uh, here, Abram encountered something of God and God spoke to him. We don't know how Abram was feeling at the time. We don't know if he was having a good day or a bad day. We just know that God spoke to him. And he's there in the land of Haran, and God says to him, it's now time to leave. This is the part of the revelation that boggles most people's brains, because here in, the, here in the West, we always like to know where we're going. And here, God says to Abram, leave your native country and your relatives and your father's family and go to the land that I'm going to show you. We're going to come back to that phrase in just, in just a little bit. Let's see if we can get this working again. Uh, maybe not. Oh, I'm pressing the wrong button. There we go. So Abram departed the Lord that 
as the Lord had instructed, and Lot went with him. And Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. So I don't think age is ever an obstacle, okay? He's 75 years old, and he decides he's going to move. And when they move, they don't get on an aeroplane, they get camels together, or maybe they walk. Some hard yakka right there. So Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran, and he took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, and all his wealth, his livestock, and all the people he had taken into his household in Haran. He headed for the land of Canaan. You see what's happening again? He's back on the move. Where his father was originally going to, now the son is fulfilling what God had spoken over the father. He's heading towards Canaan, the, the place of promise. When they arrived in Canaan, Abram travelled through the land as far as Shechem, and there he set up camp beside the Oak of Morah. Terah stopped. Abram set up camp. Do you understand the difference? Mm. For all the campers out there, you understand that if you pitch a tent, it's only there for a short period of time. Here is the thing that what Abram is doing right now. God has told him to go, and he's going, but he's setting up camp. But I love the place where he sets up camp, beside the Oak of Morah. I don't know where Morah is. I don't even know if that's the right way to pronounce it. But the concept of the oak tree in Scripture is something of the righteous people. We are righteous oaks planted by rivers, is what Isaiah would talk to us. And so I want to say to you, wherever you set up camp, set it up with righteous people. Amen. Do not set up alone. One of the greatest deceptions that have come upon the Christian church this day and age, where people seem to be leaving churches, is that they think that they can be Christians by themselves. It's purely up to them whether, that's the, whether that can happen or not. I don't, it doesn't, that's not up to me to make that judgment call. But what I do know is that when we plant ourselves beside healthy humans that are fully going after the kingdom of God, before you know it, their health comes on to you. You leak what you carry, and so if you start hanging out with healthy humans, you're going to start catching what they've got. And so here is Abram, and you'll see Abram, and you'll see this happen again when he sets up camp. He sets up beside these great oak trees. Next one. So he set there. He set up a camp beside. The Oak of Morah, at that time the area was inhabited by Canaanites. And why this was placed in scripture, I believe, was let us know that they weren't going into uninhabited land. They were going to have to fight for whatever they got. And so again, whatever kingdom land you want to take, uh, if you want to take more souls for the kingdom of God, if you want to see Christ come into more lives, then understand that this is not just going to be an easy walk-up kind of thing to do. If you want to start seeing victory and success in some of the things that have tied you down or got you all bound up in the, in, emotionally or spiritually, then understand that you might be fighting for it. You know the phrase that I use so often with this kind of stuff, that Christians these days, it's not that it's too hard. We often just think because it's not easy enough. So here is Abram. The Lord then appears to Abram again and says, I will give this land to your descendants. I want you to notice that he's giving the land to his descendants, but he's given the family to Abraham. The descendants are still 500 years away from actually receiving this. Uh, but here God is saying to him, I'm giving you a promise that is way bigger than yourself. And I want you to receive this morning when God speaks to you. Again, the promises that he's giving to you is way bigger than yourself. And so if you are a parent here today, when God speaks to you, your, whatever he's giving to you is for your children. And Abram built an altar there and dedicated it to the Lord who appeared to him. When was the last time you ever built an altar? I got a barbecue. <laughs> we don't talk about building altars these days because they often uh, represent things of idols. Uh, but the altars that they built in those days, from what we understand from history, was a bunch of rocks that they gathered together. And they were places of testimony and places of story. When God met Abram, he decided to put something physical in place. Uh, just a short while ago, 
with Anna in the baptistry, uh, what she's doing symbolically is building an altar that every single one of us have seen, that none of us can deny, and that we can all understand what she has done. She dedicated her life to the Lord. Uh, she is a living stone. Do you understand that? Am I loud enough? I feel like I'm... I feel like I'm... Can I just say... Cause I don't like doing this, because this actually is... Thank you. Um, I just want you to see what Honor has done today is so significant for us as the church. These are not little moments in time where we just go, oh, that was nice. Breakthrough has happened through Honor today. You might have been spoken to, you might have been moved. Uh, if you were moved in the Holy Spirit when Honor is speaking, again, that's the Lord just saying, I'm, just, I'm, I'm coming to you right now. You're encountering me right now. If, if you feel moved when we're worshipping and when we're singing out like this, it's the Holy Spirit coming to you and, and meeting with you and wanting to speak inside of you. Uh, this is the whole concept of encountering God. God wants to do this kind of stuff. But so often we go, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm up for that kind of stuff. I, I went to Hillsong Conference this week. Uh, it was excellent. Like, it was really excellent. Uh, but at Hillsong Conference and... and, and uh, Brady will affirm this. There are people who are really, 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 really passionate. And were you one of those, Brady? Yeah, you, you, you were dancing down the front there like that, and the praise party happens, and he, he all over it, right? And these people are so unashamed to be in the presence of God. And one of the speakers spoke out. It's just so cool that people no longer care what they think when people look at them when they're in worship. There's such a freedom when you meet with, it was 30,000 people. They sold out this year. There is such a hunger to hear what God is doing. And to be a part of it for Trish and I was a very special, a special time. Uh, but what I saw was all these living stones coming together. And Hillsong Conference 2018 was like one big living stone that was put in the middle of Sydney and that people could come to and hear it and be, and be touched by it. And, and here in this place this morning, as I was touched by it, I want you to, to receive what I'm linking right now so that you can actually receive something of what God did inside of my spirit this week. And if you want to hang out with Trish for a bit and receive what Trish received in the Holy Spirit through this week, then all of a sudden you're going to start seeing what God did in, in Olympic Park through Hillsong Conference 2018 starts flowing out all over Sydney. Are you with me? Yep. Uh, we're encountering God. And, and so when we encounter God, it's not like we just go, oh, that was nice. Yeah, had fun. Enjoyed that. Uh, that. This changed my life. This changed my life. And so I'm listening to, to speakers speak into my heart and they speak into my identity and there's things that start shifting and there's things that start changing. And there is God saying, you are encountering me right now. Open your heart to me and allow me to speak into that place. Uh, but because at times we get too tired, we go, I'm not sure if I'm ready to for that, God. I'm not sure if I'm up for that, God. I just want to encourage you that when we get up and sing the last song, praise it even when you don't feel like it. Break through the apathy. Break through whatever it is that is holding you back from the kingdom of God so that you can actually be in that place to say, it doesn't matter how I feel, God still just wants to talk to me. Nowhere in Scripture does Abram say, I wasn't feeling like it today, God. God encountered him. Abram listened to him. And before you know it, he's dedicating things to God. Now, like I said, it's hundreds of years still yet to come before this land would become Israel. And so what's he doing? Well, he's effectively marking his territory. In all due respects to dogs, what we're doing is marking our territory for the kingdom of God. What was Hillsong doing this year? Marking the territory for the kingdom of God. What are we doing here in this room today? We're marking our territory for the kingdom of God. So when anyone ever comes into this place, they will know that God has been in this place. That God is in this place. Okay. God is doing stuff in this place. God is changing things in this place. Lives are being transformed in this place. Amen. This is 
the living altar that we actually started building. Last Sunday morning, we finished the service by coming to the front and we started seeing that living altar start coming together. And, and there it is, the living stone is coming together and we're dedicating ourselves to God. And last Sunday, we dedicated ourselves to pray for honour in this week that she has just had where the Holy Spirit can minister and minister in and through her. Then he built another altar and dedicated it to the Lord. And he worshipped. He worshipped. Often in our day and age, we think worship just happens when we sing. Uh, worship happens when we breathe. Abraham's life was all in. Do you see that? There was nothing to go back to. One of the things that spoke to me in conference this week, I think it was Judith Smith, and I was speaking with Brady about this before the service, but one of the phrases he said, where are the people who have given up everything and can't go back? And I sat there and thought, 15 years ago, I, I walked away from an engineering uh, career. Six figures, I was getting paid at the time. To take up a career here, and it's not about the money. But I know I could never go back. And I sat there listening, just crying, knowing that God has got my back. He has my back. Where is my future? Well, that's in His hands. And I'm very happy to live, live it there. I wonder, and I'm not asking everyone to go into, into full time ministry and do stuff like that. Where are you in your Christian walk? Are you like Abram where well, you're not going back? I've seen enough to know that I didn't find contentment and happiness back there. I tried it my own way. It didn't, didn't work. I've seen where, where, like with Terah, he stopped, right? And it's not about my dad or anything like that, but it's knowing now that my dad got me so far, but now he's calling me on. This is back to the top of the chapter in Romans chapter 12. The Lord said to Abram, leave your native country, your relatives, your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. That means he's going to see it. That means that the promise is not some distant thing that you're never actually reaching. That means he's going to walk on the land he is going to receive. And so what does that mean for us today? I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> Let me just answer that for you. <laughs> Leave your native country, your relatives and your father's family and go to the land that I will show you. If you're a uni student, this is the land that the Lord is showing you. The Lord will show you people who are so desperately in need of him. And you're there carrying something of the kingdom of God. You carry the keys to the kingdom. You carry the, the, the message that will bring healing and restoration. You carry it. And so if you're at university, he's showing you something. If you, if you work in a school like Lorraine does, uh, this is the promised land for you, right? You're, you're calling it into that place. And Lorraine, with your heart of compassion, I know your heart. And, and you see things. And, and you carry such compassion, Lorraine. I just want to encourage you that the children that you touch are the children that receive. They receive compassion. They receive love. They, they receive safety. They receive care. They receive something that you know that they need, but you carry it, and you carry it in abundance. It's the same deal with you, Lily, when you go to TAFE, and you know what TAFE students are like, right? They're like some of them are quite feral, and, and, and some of those things, uh, I, like, am, is that wrong? Like, am, am I wrong in saying that? Or some of the teachers probably too, right? But, but in saying that, Lily, you carry such grace, and you carry, again, there's such a heart to see, see restoration happen. And so, Lily, it's again that the kids that you speak into, every word that you utter has got something of God in it. And if we can start believing what we carry and knowing what we speak out, regardless if it's good morning or you need Jesus, at the same time, love is flowing out of you. Love is flowing out of you. 
Lorraine tells her kids that she loves them. You tell Craig that? Yeah. Oh, good, good. Excellent. And so again, <laughs> right here in this place, husband and wife, you see what happens when you say that phrase, joy happens. Do you see it? Should we not say it more? Can you say to the person next to you that you love them? Can you see joy just happening right now? I love you, right? I love you. You see joy is just happening right now? I love you. I love the brick wall. If you live in a house... Everyone does. I want to show you the land that God's called you into. Because again, when you welcome a neighbour or greet a neighbour or help a neighbour or do whatever it is in your neighbourhood, all of a sudden the kingdom is actually doing something. And do not underestimate what God is doing in and through you. Go to the land that I will show you. What I love about this passage of scripture and about Abram, or who would become Abraham, is God said to him, this is all about faith. This is not just him choosing one day, okay, this one day and one day alone I'm going to get baptised, or this one day and one day alone I'm going to move my family. This was his life. This was his journey. This was God encountering him, and the encounter must have been so impactful on Abram's life that it changed his entire life. It changed him to the point where he realised that he needed to move his entire family. He was settled. He was safe. He had all these uh, livestock, as the Bible would say. He had lands. He had all that sort of stuff. And God says to him, I'm actually going to move you. And this, whatever the encounter was and whatever that, however that happened, whether that was an angel of the Lord standing in front of him, whether God was speaking to him through his imagination or speaking to him through creation, I don't know. We don't know. It just says the Lord said. But when the Lord spoke, he said, I want to show this is not a fairy tale. This is not mythical. This is the Lord spoke and now the Lord wants him to see. And he had to travel a long way to get to the place where the Lord had him. And I'm sure there were many times on the road where he could have stopped. But instead he decided to camp. And when he decided to camp, he decided to put himself be beside oak trees in those places of health and those places of growth. And again, I want to speak that into your church. That while you are here, while you are with us, while you are camping here in this place, whether it is for a day, whether it is for a week, whether it is for a year, whether it is for a lifetime, put yourself beside these oaks that we speak about. They exist. They are not unicorns. They exist. Honour is one of those oaks. Any amen to that? Amen. Amen. There are a number of those oaks inside of this room. And those oaks that have gone through seven years of very challenging times. And I want to say this to you, Anna. You have been through seven years of drought, but you are thriving. What some people have declared drought, you're fruitful. So wherever you've planted yourself, the water of life is flowing in and through you. And from you. You have a bunch of people around you right now that love you. Why? Because you have loved them. That's how relationships work. So here is Abram. We don't know the good things he did. We don't know the bad things he did. But what we know is he encountered God. And we know that the good things or the bad things didn't stop him from encountering God. And this is how grace works. God just loves you. Are you with me? Yep. And as we finish this, uh, as I finish this message this morning, I just want to encourage you to understand what this little passage of, from about Abraham is all about. He was declared righteous because of his his faith. He knew who God. He knew who God was, and he knew God would do what he said he would do. He knew that God had his back. He knew that God had his future, and therefore he knew that God had his present. He knew that there were troubles in front of him. He knew there were obstacles that he had to overcome. But in every single part of it, his faith is what declared him right with God. Your faith is not about your, your, uh, your current mood. 
or your current circumstance. Your faith is that enduring thing that is flowing through you to believe that God has you and that He is leading you. And this morning I want to encourage you in faith to continue to stand. Encounter the Father this morning. Allow that encounter to happen. So we're going to finish this morning and I don't know how Lisa wants to finish it. Do you want to do new wine? She doesn't. She just shrugged. So she had something else on her mind. Um, we'll go with whatever Lisa wants to do. What would I like? I just said what I would like. <laughs> are, are you still trying to argue with me? New wine. This is all about encounter and the Spirit of the Lord is here. I'm going to be standing on the carpet as I do most times. And again, press in. Maybe you don't feel like it this morning. Maybe you've had a hard night. Maybe you got up and watched the soccer and it didn't end up the way that you wanted it to end up. I don't know. Let your second circumstance be second to the encounter right now. Let your circumstance catch up with the encounter. Allow God to speak to you this morning. And if it hasn't been through a message, I wonder if it could be through a song. Make me a servant. You understand that that's a prayer, right? Make me a vessel. That's a prayer. A vessel for what? The vessel to hold on to what God's about to pour into you. But here is the promise. Here is your little Canaan moment. That vessel is not big enough to hold what God's about to pour into you. It was never designed to be big enough to hold what God's poured into you. It was just designed to catch some of it. The rest of it's going to get all over you. The rest of it's going to change your life. Not just your life, but the lives of those that are around you. Maybe your family. Maybe you're thinking right now of people that need to come and need to hear and need to respond. But that's why you're here. Because I've told you this morning what God is now showing you. Remember Legion? He said to Jesus, I want to follow you all the days of my life. And Legion and Jesus said, cool. But first I want you to go home. I want you to see your family. I want them to see what God has done inside of your life. I don't want them just to hear about it. I want them to see it. So whatever it is that God has done in your life or doing in your life, you have been designed so that other people can see what God is doing. So we have an orange and a green butterfly over there. A transformation of life. This is what you carry, Billy. That the life next to you has been transformed just because you're hanging out with that person. Joy just happens in a moment when you share what you carry. The kingdom is getting bigger in this place this morning. Allow it to. You want to come and stand with me? You feel free. There's a little baby here. What's his name? Her name? What's her name? Elston. Elston. Oh, excellent. That's a beautiful name. I saw a little Tonga truck. And I just feel that this young girl is going to be removing guilt and shame from people's lives. Just to carry the dirt away. Wash it away. Such a beautiful little girl. I want us to pray for each of those who have come forward. Maybe if Lily and Lisa don't just stand there. Let's do something. Speak, speak into a microphone when you have a vision for one of these guys down the front. And Dodie, I see you. I see wings that have been revealed. Mounting on the wings of an eagle is something you've heard many times. But I hear God saying to you, rest is upon you. And when he speaks, creation happens. So he's about to create a place where rest freedom flow for you. Victoria, I 
see you with a bow and arrow. And I see at times you've felt like you've missed. I know you're one that your aim is the Lord is honing right now. He's saying you have not missed. But there's just other targets the Lord is now hitting in and through you. He's training your arms for battle, Victor. Such victory upon you. What do you got, Lily? for the voice of God. What do you got, Lisa? I'm sorry. limbs have been cut off you. I've seen the tears. I know the love that you have. I know the love you have, not just for your family, but for the kingdom of God. Every pruning has made you more fruitful than you've ever been before. Every pain and every hurt has not been void, not been void or wasted. More fruit is yet coming. I see you, Shell, as so many people just sitting at your feet. It kind of reminds me of Jesus teaching the Sermon on the Mount. Where there are keys of the kingdom that you hold deep within you. And it feels like you've been wondering whether you can start using some of those keys. And maybe you haven't used those keys in the longest time. Those keys are now ready to be used. Take them out. Allow the sun to shine on them again. The Spirit of the Lord is strong upon you. Uh, Victor, I've got a vision that I've never seen before. It's of a sleigh with lots of dogs in it. And it's like two or three dogs are missing from your sleigh. And so you're watching other people and they speed past you and you're just going on. And you're calling it and it just feels like people aren't stopping. And Jesus is saying they weren't never meant to. He wants you right now. And he replaces dogs with lions. You need to learn the voice of the lion. The voice of Christ. There is greater strength ahead of you than you've ever had before. The desire that you, you have to be fed is in front of you. And the Lord will nourish you. So this morning, Jesus, I want to say thank you for uh, just a, a moment in time where a bunch of stones now have been pulled together. I just want to lift up honour to you and Jesus in the week that's ahead of her. I want to declare over her glory. I want to declare that the angels of heaven surround you, honour. 
and they've been sent, as Hebrews 1 will tell us, to minister to those receiving salvation. And so not only have they been sent to you, but they have been sent to the ones that you are ministering to. And so the Holy Spirit in and through you is building the kingdom. And so in the week that is ahead of you, do not be shy to step out and touch. Do not be shy to step out and reach. Do not be shy to step out and declare. Do not be shy to step out and love. Father, today, I want to pray that we as the church, if we, as we have witnessed what the, what the kingdom has been doing in and through her, that we will not forget this day. That this day will not disappear as just one of those days, but this day will be known and this day will be remembered because the Spirit of the Lord encountered Haverfield Baptist Church. The Spirit of the Lord encountered you. So Jesus, today, let your new wine flow out from us. It was never meant to stay right with us. It was meant to leak. Let it flow today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father God, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you um, for the work that you, you do in our lives, for the unending work. Father God, as we as we go out today and we go downstairs and we, we um, have drink tea and, and hang out, God, I pray that your name your might and your power would be on our lips. Father, that you would continue the work in our hearts that has already begun. Lord, and as we, sit, as we go out through the week, Father, I pray that you would begin, that you would just continue to do the work that you've started. Lord, that we might, that we might know you more. Lord, that we might be your people. Father God, and bring glory to you. Glory to our world. In your mighty name. Come on down for a couple of